Hey everybody, how's it going? We are still working on our 2005 372 XP Husqvarna. Um, this is a super clean, super nice saw. And it was running, you guys saw in the last video. This was a running saw that I tore down. Am I a madman? Yeah, probably. Um, I'm going to do horrible things to this saw, i.e. porting it. And I just want to be sure. Friends, I pretty much always do the bottom ends in every saw that rolls across this bench. Um, bottom ends are labor, but not a lot of cost. And uh, this saw has a Farmatech crank in it. Now, how do I know that? I bought it off of a buddy. He's an honest guy and he knows the kind of things that I do. And he mentioned, he's like, hey, it's a nice saw. Pretty correct, but it's got a Farmatech crankshaft in it. So... One thing I'm going to do today is let's do a bottom end on a 372. And again, friends, if you're if you want to follow along and do the same builds as I do on video, uh, this is a highway gasket set that I got from Wolf Creek. Uh, I've had no trouble with those gasket sets. And Ryan also from Wolf Creek sent me these nice uh, SKF bearings and a new wrist pin bearing. Now, what am I going to put in here? I think I'm going to go. Ryan sent me a couple of crankshafts. One's a highway, one's an NWP. Now friends, looking at them, uh, they both look super nice, high quality. Um, I'm not concerned about either of these cranks. I think I'm gonna go with the NWP, the New West crank. Um, I've, I like these cranks, they're beefy, they seem to hold up, so if you're looking, if you're looking for a replacement crank, um, nothing wrong with these. I've been more than happy with them. And Ryan was gracious enough to send us a new crank. Friends, if you enjoy this channel and you like the things that I do and you enjoy watching it, please go over to Wolf Creek Saw Shop. Check out what they have, uh, wolfcreeksawshop.com. Ryan has helped me tremendously and helped this channel. The things that we do on this channel would not be possible without the help of people like Ryan at Wolf Creek Saw Shop. So uh, I always, I always want to take the time to help or to, to thank him and maybe send some people over. Friends, if you could go over there, if you need parts, please check out Wolf Creek Saw Shop. Like I said, Ryan has made a lot of this stuff. I can just change a crankshaft no problem and make another video for you guys and Ryan makes that happen so thank you buddy appreciate it okay what we're gonna do today is we're gonna split this crank replace the bearings or re we're gonna split this crankcase you guys knew what I was saying replace the bearings um I probably will swap the seals uh, I know these are new seals in this saw one way you can tell good seals is they're very tight um, this these seals when you turn them over no problems there But again when you heat a crankcase up as hot as you heat these up to get the bearing to let go um, You can you can melt the crank seals. So be aware that if you are doing a bottom end even if you have good crank seals um, You know if you buy the highway set it comes with the seals in it and you're good to go Okay, I'm gonna get set up here and uh Let's do a bottom end on a 372. I'm excited. That way I can put this thing back together, put any top end on it of any, you know, I can build a nice mild work saw top end. I can go crazy and I'm not going to be worried about this bottom end letting go. So we're going to start with this. And then friends, I'm not sure which one I'm going to do. Either this 372 XPG or maybe I'll start tearing down this 371. And that might be the way I go. And we'll build a couple of 372s on the channel. I want to build saws that guys that live on power saws cut with. One of these saws, friends, when I get one that I like and that I put some time on it and I think it's strong enough, uh, I'm going to send probably this one uh, to Bucket and let him run it and see. The only way I'm going to get better, friends, is to send my saws to people that have way more experience than me. I could build these and pass them around to my buddies and I would get 100% good results that way. But I want I want professionals to run my saws. That way I can give you guys the straight goods. If, if my saws don't cut it, they don't get run. And if they don't get run, there's no point on building them. So 
Um, everything I do on this channel is just to share information and see what do these things actually need. I am going to be putting a 52 mil highway big bore top end on this saw, probably with a 272 piston, and uh, we're going to go from there. Anyhow, the first step is to build a bottom end saw. If you want to port your saw and you got an old saw, 2005, this thing's getting up there in age, um, you pretty much got to do a bottom end and you got to have a quality crankshaft. What happens with these friends? Um, my experience with these Farmatech cranks is they are soft and what ends up happening, once you've run the saw for a bit, especially ported, uh, the bottom end, the big end bearings uh, tend to let go and get hot or the crank will stretch. And uh, you could stretch a crank enough to top the piston, um, believe it or not. So out with the old and in with the new. Let's get this party started. In the last video, I did most of the disassembly. You guys can see the crankcase here. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, I noted there was no, there's a little O-ring underneath. There's a sleeve that goes over the crank. Um, that the crank seal actually seals on. I don't know why Husqvarna did that, but there was no little O-ring behind and this saw seemed to run okay, so. Um, a lot of saws don't have them. Some saws do. Um, I'll see if I can get a new one from my Husqvarna dealer. So there you go. Two screws there. I'm just going to take this dog off because this saw is going westy coasty all the way. We're going to put big dogs on it. Okay, first thing to do, undo your crankcase bolts. It's a shame that I'm doing this because this is a new build. But like I said, um... If, if I was going to run this stock, I would probably just leave that crank in there and see. Problem is a crank failure in a saw like this, more often than not, can can do a lot of damage. So, there you go, get that one out. Some sealant on there. Okay, next thing, these bolts here, there's four of them. Little bit different than the normal bottom ends you guys have seen me done, 272s, 268s. What else have I done? I've done a 461 on this channel. They're all pretty much the same, but when you're first starting out, as many bottom end builds as you can see, the better. The main thing is, when you're doing a bottom end, make sure your crank is straight and don't force anything together. Okay, heat is your friend. And uh, basically, you got to take the crank seals out anyways. Um, because you want to make sure that the bearings don't have load in them. And I'll go over that when we do this. Uh, a wood stove helps, or a heat gun, or a torch. However you want to heat your cases up is up to you. Um, I've, I've used wood stoves, I've used heat guns, and I've used torches. I prefer a heat gun. I find it gets the cases hot right now. Now, if I'm doing other things and I have a roaring fire going, like I do today, I'll just throw the cases on often, and uh, it gets the case nice and hot, and you can just put them together, no problems, without doing anything. Maybe you're working on another saw. You know, you leave the cases on the bench, or maybe you're cleaning parts for the saw you're putting back together. Well, while you're doing that, you can just put the cases on the bench, or the cases on the fire on the wood stove, and uh, two birds with one stone. Okay, there you go. There's all your screws. Make sure there's no extra screws. We've all done that. At least I have. You go to split the saw, and it won't come apart. Okay, next thing. You don't need any heat for this step. Friends, you're going to need one of these if you work on saws. This one's old. I've had it for many years. It's quite beat up. But it still gets the job done. Okay, and all that does is go on the end of the crankshaft. Now, one thing you want to do with these... And I've showed this before, but there's always newcomers coming to the channel. Welcome to the newcomers. Make sure it's level, okay? Level with the, with the line of the crank or with the case. If it's tilted down or up, it won't come apart as easy. 
Okay. Just making sure. And look at that, friends. See? I am not a 372 guru. Look. I missed a bolt. I knew there was more than five bolts on a 372 case. Now, did I do that for the video to show you guys? Or... Am I just a fellow working in a shop? You decide. Leave a comment below. <laughs> no, friends, I seriously forgot to take that out. See that, though? I didn't force it. Now, I could have reefed on it and just, you know, really made a mess. But no, I... Okay, and now look. This thing's already come apart. See that? Beauty. Okay, there's one side apart. Again, brand new gasket on this thing. And it came right off, which is nice. That's gonna make this job very fast. Okay. That gasket could almost be reused. We're not gonna do that, but. Now, one thing, friends, there's a lot of sludge in this saw. I don't know. I know the history was my buddy's saw, but what is. Look at that. You guys see that? Weird. It's like there's grease in the saw or something. I don't know. Weird. Maybe there's grease. I don't know. Yeah. Seem oh, I think I know the deal. I bet you I bet you this uh one of those lineup dolls. I bet you these bearings had grease in them. I'll bet you money actually. So, again. I don't usually run them with grease, but some people do, and you know what? That's fine. It, it, we all do things different. It's not wrong. If it works, it works. Who am I to say anything? I'm just, I'm investigating this saw, right? It's not my saw. It Well, it's my saw now. I bought it, but I didn't build this saw. I've never run it. You know what I mean? So it's my job as a builder to know, as get as much information about this saw as I can. Well, I'm putting it back together to find any issues especially when you're porting them and again make sure make sure this line is level with that it looks pretty straight again it grabs both sides of the bearings one side and the other and it just pushes the crankshaft through and then you loosen it off. Okay. Here's our here's our Holtz form of crank. And no, I'm not gonna keep that, friends. That's going in the G file. Um, like I said, I don't like these cranks. Never been a fan. I mean, they're 20 bucks, I think. Um, I don't know, friends. Just me. We all have our things. That's one of my things. I just don't use these. Okay. So, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to clean up the insides of these cases. They're clean. My buddy did a great job cleaning this saw. But yeah, I'm going to clean up the insides of these cases, and then we'll take the bearings out. I cleaned up the cases. They were nice and shiny. That's why I wanted to do this job now, before there's any oil in the tank. Okay. Heat gun. I use this heat gun constantly. It's got a million miles on it. My heat gun is one of the most used tools in this shop. I light my fires with it. And I do my bottom ends with it. Now all I'm going to do is just heat this consistently. Try not to heat the bearing. Heat the cases. Now, you know when the when the case is hot enough, you'll smell the oils burning out of it, generally. Okay, always have your welding gloves present, because these do get hot. Now, I'll just heat this up for about five minutes, and I brought my temp gun out, and I'll show you guys the temps, if you're not sure. Basically, this is an interference fit, and the case is smaller than the bearing. So you heat the case up, and the bearing should fall right out. Now, some guys do this cold, uh, I don't. I, I'd rather be, uh, I, I'm not lucky, so. <laughs> I always heat my cases up. It's an extra step, but I've never damaged the case 
knocking the crank bearing out. Okay, we're back. Now these bearings are still good. They are new, but again, I use bearings that I like, so uh, I don't take risks. Again, 298 degrees Fahrenheit. Somewhere around 275, 300 is where I like it. Again, flip this over. Put that in there. Not quite, friends. I, I waited too long to go grab my hammer. Notice, I'm kind of limp wristing it. Don't hit it hard. If it doesn't come out, heat it again. Look, I have to go get my hammer, and we've already dropped 50 degrees. See, it won't come out, so heat it back up. Not quite, 259. These cases cool off real quick, almost like they're designed to dissipate heat. So you got to work fairly quickly. Close. There we go, we're at 300. Okay. Just like that, okay? That's how I do it. You won't scratch the case that way and 100% success rate. Okay, and I'll just move this out of the way, grab the socket, and then we'll do the other case. Now notice, like the case is at 77 degrees Fahrenheit to start. Again, if you don't have a heat gun and you have a wood stove, put it on your wood stove for half an hour, 20 minutes. The whole case will get hot then, but often, when I leave them on my wood stove, the bearing falls right out on its own. So, that's another move. Another note, the uh, the oiler holes for the oil pump on these go right through the case. Maybe something you want to put some sealant on when you put them back in. Avoid an air leak. Again, I'll just keep heating these nice and consistently. Until we reach our temp. It's about a minute and a half later. Well, we were at 292, 262. That should be good. 310 degrees. There you go. And again, I'm not hitting it hard. This is a metal bench top, friends. Uh, people have mentioned that. It's like, geez, that makes a lot of noise. Yeah. <laughs> it rattles. Okay, I'll clean all the grease and oil out, and uh, we'll get this ready to put new bearings in. Okay, we got our new SKF bearings. Here's the model number in case you guys are interested. Got these from Wolf Creek Saw Shop. Love these bearings. They are quality. I've never had an issue with SKF. And I use a ton of those 6203 C3 bearings. Now, there's two ways to do this, friends. One is no better than the other. You can put the bearings in the cases, okay, and then put the crank into the bearings. If you have a crank tool or a puller set, you can put the bearings into the cases and then pull your crank through. If not, heat your bearings up a little bit. And, and uh, once they're in here, heat your bearings up and put your crankshaft through. Again, it's an interference fit. Or put your bearings onto your crankshaft. And again, notice these don't fit. 
okay? They have to be heated up. They are a very, very precise tolerance. Sorry, friends, I literally got that one stuck on there. They are such a precision fit, okay? See? Like, <laughs> they'll only go so far, okay? And then that's it. Now, I usually, I usually put my bearings on my crankshaft, and then I heat the cases and put the crankshaft in. So I'm going to do it that way. You don't have to heat the bearings up much. What you do need is a pair of pliers, so I'm going to grab those. Okay, I usually just grab them like this, so that way I can go chook. I don't want to burn my hands. Okay, I'm going to take these and put them on my bench. Heat them up, crankshafts here. This is one of those jobs, there's just, you have to work quickly uh, and efficiently. Okay, I'm gonna move this crank over here. This crank is cold to the touch, so it shouldn't take much heat. Just gonna move this over so I don't start a fire. And I'm just gonna heat up this bearing real quickly. Just warm, it doesn't have to get smoking hot. Try not to burn the uh, top of my bench. Okay, just heat the bearing up warm. Grab it with this. Ready? Okay, there you go. There's one side. Now do the same with the other side. Okay, here we go. Got my welding glove. I'm trying not to block you guys. There you go. In. There's one. Just that simple, friends. Now, all I'll do is I heat up the other case. I'll put the gasket on. Make sure this surface is clean. I've already cleaned it, but make sure it's nice and clean. I'll put the other gasket on, and we'll get this thing ready to assemble. Now, notice... It's stuck in there. That bearing ain't going anywhere now. Okay, I'm just going to grab my gasket. I love these highway gasket sets. I've been using them for years. Um, rarely have I had an issue. And I mean, any product you buy once in a while, when you go through as much stuff as guys like me do, you're going to have, you know, an issue here or there. But these these kits have been nothing but good. And... Uh, and they're reasonable, like 15 bucks for all the gaskets you need and your crank seals. You can't go wrong with that. Okay, so got this clean, light my gasket on there. Now the only part left is to heat this side. Again, cleaning the mating surface and put the two halves together. Okay, I've moved everything kind of down. You guys can see where we're at temperature wise. We're almost at 300. This is the part that there's no messing around. You put it together quick. And uh, I gotta get my welding gloves on. I've burnt myself doing this. And you know why I don't wear gloves a lot of times, friends? You can't, you can't uh, mess with the camera. Uh, building stuff on camera is so different than just doing it. Okay. Lois, I got my welding glove on. I'm going to put the one on my other hand. See if we can get this together without any messing around. Also, I'm putting this together with the camera in between me and it. Okay, get this ready to go. Okay. Turn this off. There we go, just like that, friends. Okay, so what I'm trying to show you guys, do not rush this. Take your time, make sure it's good and hot before you put it together. When I first started working on saws, often I didn't get stuff hot enough and I would, I would get the bearing halfway on. Now you gotta pull it together with the screws, which are not meant for that. You know, you risk damaging the threads in the case. And if you pull those threads out, um, I mean, I guess you could repair them, but that adds a lot of work to the job. 
when really all it takes is a little more heat. So now this is fully seated. I don't know if you guys can see it is fully together, so I'm not super worried. Just gonna get these all the way in. The four around the crank are usually the ones I'm most concerned about. Okay, I'm just tightening them in a crisscross pattern, getting them to seat, and then I'll reef them down. Then I, then usually I'll start adjusting the crank before everything cools down, because things move a lot easier then. I won't bore you guys with me tightening this last screw. Okay, reef them down good. Oh, this one's loose again. If you want to use a torque wrench, by all means, please do. I don't, I just tight. <laughs> and I'll tighten these again after everything cools down. Usually though, they're tight. Okay, there we go. Now, is the crankshaft in the center? It's not, it's not smooth right now, friends, okay? You want this to be smooth. Now, you want to look, is the crankshaft in the center? Well, this one's pretty darn close. Now, I'm cheating on this one. These are both shouldered bearing pockets, meaning the bearings can't go too far out. There's a shoulder holding them. Now, all I'm going to do, friends, take this little brass mallet. Ready? Give it a good whack. And look at that. See how loose that got? There was just a little bit of tension on the crankshaft. So don't be bashful. Get a good, a brass mallet is probably about the best or an aluminum mallet, I guess, would work. Don't use a dead blow. Dead blow doesn't give enough shock. All you're doing is taking the side load off the bearing. You guys see how smooth that is? This is a bottom end now that I'm not concerned about. We have brand new bearings. I will put new seals in that, but now I know I can put as much horsepower through this thing as I want, and I'm not worried. Friends, the thing is, I don't want to hold back because I'm worried about the, the rod stretching or the bearings. Uh, these SKF bearings, I've put them in many, many builds. A lot of the builds on this channel have had these same SKF bearings. I've never lost one yet, so look how smooth that is. With no oil in it, friends. That's pretty good. Okay, there's the bottom end. Done. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And again, this thing's cooling off and smooth. Okay, that's how you want a crankshaft to move. This thing I'll do, I'll cut... I'll cut the extra gasket off underneath where the base of the cylinder goes. And there you go. We are good to go. I could start planning whatever I want to do with this build. Now, what I'll do is I'll let this thing sit and I'll let it sit overnight usually. And uh, once it's completely cooled down, I will once again check the bearings to see if they're smooth. If they're not, well, guess what? I'll take my little mallet here and I'll go like that. And like that and just smoothing them right out this one I think is gonna be pretty good the crank is dead center um, you can use a feeler gauge if you want stack feelers shims under each side until you get the same distance on both sides if you really want to be precise and I may do that on this one this is gonna be a hot rod saw and uh, you want to make sure that you do everything in your power to keep these things alive. And again, I've put the other bolts in and just tighten them down and we're good to go now. Anyhow, friends, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Rebuild your bottom ends. It's not difficult. You do need a heat gun and a case splitter. But once you get that stuff, you, you have it and you can just keep reusing it. So... Anyhow, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later. It's time for question of the day. This one came from Ryan Moreland. This is a question or a topic I've read about on the internet. I didn't know this was a thing 
and maybe I'm wrong, but I'm going to answer this question based on my own experience and the experience of others. Ryan wants to know, should he be storing his saws with no bars and chains on them um, or a loosened chain uh, to prevent damage to the PTO side bearing, the clutch side? Um, I guess the idea is if your chain is super tight and pulling on that bearing, like pulling on the clutch, that you could do damage to it somehow um, just from having that tension on there. Ryan also noticed that I store my saws on the shelf behind me with no bars and chains. So first off, um, Ryan, some of those saws do have bars and chains on them. Uh, the top row does. Uh, that way I can walk underneath without hitting my head on them. Um, and then I have a shelf of cutters, saws that I run regularly, and those are barred up all the time. I have saws that have had bars on them for years and years. And, uh, uh, no issue. I know guys that cut every day, five days a week, their saws always have bars. I mean, they take them off to, to clean the bar groove out and that and to, and to file, but their saws always have bars on them. So I have read about this on the internet and I'm going to say no, I don't really think there's a benefit to that. And again, I could be wrong. Um, I think having a sharp chain and not over tightening your chain uh, is probably a, a better a better preventative measure um, and running good oil at the right ratios. But honestly, no, you shouldn't really have trouble with your bottom end bearings. A lot of these bearings I'm changing on this channel can be 25, 30 years old. So, uh, and honestly, Ryan, if you want to do that, by all means, slack your chain. Uh, if If you think it helps, or, or it's a good idea. There's no there's no harm in loosening those two nuts and loosening your chain off. But personally, I don't do that. I leave my bars and chains on all the time. So anyways, great question, Ryan. And uh, I've seen that subject online. And it is an interesting subject. It's just my opinion. And I may be wrong. But anyhow, keep sending those questions of the day. And I'll keep putting them in the videos. Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.